In this video, I'm going to show you how to edit and export HDR footage. Now, the first thing you have to realize is for you to work on HDR, you're going to need an HDR monitor if you want accurate color, accurate exposure. So what I'm using is my TV and I'm using Windows 10, which you will need to do this, by the way. So the first thing we're going to do is work on our TV. We have to set our TV. I have the Sony A1E 4K OLED. We're going to set that up and then we're going to set up our Windows. So in Windows, what we're going to do is go ahead and minimize this. And as you can see, we are really red and that's because HDR 10 is on in the TV settings. So what we're going to do now is right click display settings and we're going to go to HDR and WCG. Now, for you to get this option, you're going to have to download the Windows 10 creative update that they had back in April or something like that. So let's go ahead and turn that on and as you're going to see, everything should be neutraled out. Now, the screen capture software I'm using is just NVIDIA. So what you're actually seeing might be different when I'm exporting this footage because I think the ca screen cap is only capturing uh, Rec 709, so not HDR. So what you're watching might actually be different. So just follow along, especially when I'm starting to adjust exposure, saturation, and contrast. It's gonna look different. But that is why I gave you guys the downloadable file that I am working with. And it's this uh, shot that I got from the Panasonic GH5S. Make sure you follow along if you have an HDR, HDR monitor. If you're following along in an SDR monitor, it's going to be a little bit harder. If you can help me better this process, please let me know in the comments below. I'm just showing you how I am doing it from reading from different sources because the whole HDR game is pretty confusing right now. I'm going to try to save you from all those technicalities and just show you what works for me. And I'm hoping it will work for you too. So go ahead and download the footage and import it in DaVinci Resolve 15. Like I said, to work with HDR, I'm pretty sure you're going to need to buy the paid version of the DaVinci Resolve, which is 15 Studio. So load that up. I have the waveform here, which we will need. If you don't have that, go ahead and control shift W. That should bring it up for you. But what we're going to do first is click on DaVinci Resolve in the top left, go to preferences. We're going to go to user if you're not there and we're going to go to color and we're going to enable HDR scopes for ST2084. Click save and as you can see, the numbers will change. So now you are showing the scopes for HDR. This is very important because the scopes is so helpful when it comes to HDR, even though I don't have a really expensive HDR monitoring, right? So the next thing we're going to do is set up the Vinci Resolve for HDR. So when you click this little gear, bottom right corner, click that. We are gonna go to, um, let's set the settings. Actually, that's fine for now, we'll leave that. I shot it in 4K, but we'll change that after. We're gonna go to color management. And we're gonna go to color science, drop down to YRGB color managed. And that's gonna give you more options. We're gonna click use separate color space in gamma. Input color space, I'm gonna do what my footage is, which is a Panasonic V gamut. We're gonna go with Panasonic V log. For timeline color space, I'm gonna use a Rec 2020, which is HDR. We're gonna go to ST 2084 1000 nits. Just follow along. I know this is all crazy, but just follow along. Same thing for the output. Scroll all the way down. 1000 nits, maximum time luminance is 1000 nits. We're gonna click HDR mastering for 1000 nits. You're gonna leave the Dolby Vision and HDR 10 plus alone for now. Now, this part right here, I accidentally just found out I was messing around with it and it works and it helps me out. Like I said earlier, what you're watching in this video right now is probably SDR. So what you're looking at in this video is going to look different so you have to you have to download the footage and follow along so under 3d color viewer lookup table what we're going to do is use every alexa log c through rec 709 and watch what happens to this if you're following along 
we're going to click save. It crushes it, right? But that's because that's just in the media pool. So what we're going to do now is click this and drag this into the timeline. All right? So you can see there it's still flat, right? I'm going to go ahead and mute this so you guys don't hear it. Okay. Now I'm going to go to the color tab and you're going to see the difference. Boom. Contrast right off the bat. We're going to go back to that settings and we're going to turn it off. See that? It only affects the color tab because the 3D color viewer lookup table. That's what it is. All right? So let's go ahead and go back to Arial uh, Alexa Log C Rec 709. And, Rec 709. And this really, really helps me with the look. For some reason, I messed around with it, and this is the best way I can come up with as far as trying to figure out exposures and whatnot. We're gonna do Control F, and as you can see, it's pretty dim if you're following along. Guys, not the actual video right now. This is probably really bright for SDR. So what we're gonna do now is start correcting this footage to make it look good. So the first thing I'm going to do with the nodes is I'm going to add contrast. But as you can see, it's probably flat if you're following along. So we're going to add some contrast here. We're in the primaries and the wheels color tab if you're not there. And then we're going to pivot it a little bit up, just a little bit. All right. I'm going to go ahead and remove this, make this bigger. OK. So I'm just you know, moving this up. And I'm trying to get some details back to that the clouds there because that's what we want right we don't want it blown out now if you're looking at this waveform and this waveform is huge whenever you're correcting your hdr footage you have to determine where your exposure lies in here you have to determine what is good for you because there is no perfect answer you will have to experiment to see which works best. I can tell you right now with my setup, this one right here, anything below this one after encoding it with hybrid is pretty much gone. It's black. So I try to leave everything above it. So whenever you're working with your footage, which is going to be different for every clip, you have to mess around with this. You have to find the sweet spot for you because there is no just one answer for everything okay so we're going to leave the shadows right there where it is but what we're going to do is lift this up because if you control f that's dark that's really dark so what we're going to do is we're going to go to second node and we're going to right click it and go to hdr mode and we're going to go to gain and we're going to crank this up so you can see it's retaining those blue uh blue clouds pretty darn good we're going to go back to the node one and we're going to even try to get some of that back again, right? Because I like those blue clouds, right? You can mask this, but that's secondaries. You know, we'll do that later on. For now, we're just doing primaries. You can see here that the, the shadows got lifted a little bit. So what I'm going to do is go to my third node and drop that down just a tiny, tiny bit. HDR mode is strange. And you can mess around with it right now. The only way I'm using the HDR mode is by lifting the gain or the offset. That is the only thing that I find that useful for right now. Control F. And this might not look good right now, but I'm going to go ahead and export this. Now, just from experience so far, whenever I export HDR, it is oversaturated. So I'm going to go to my uh, timeline, Alt S to add a node. I'm going to go to saturation and drop this down to like 40. Because I know for a fact that when I export this, uh, when I export this later, it's going to be saturated. So I try to remove some saturation right off the bat just for safety. So here's the clip. I'm going to control F. And this is probably going to look really wrong when you're watching this video. But if you're following along with your setup, in the HDR TV or monitor, it should look really good. So the next step we're going to do is deliver this thing. So you can obviously do a lot more things to this, but I'm going to keep it simple and short for you guys because we're already over 10 minutes. So we're going to go to the deliver tab.
So YouTube, for YouTube to read your HDR video, it's gonna need metadata. Well, luckily DaVinci Resolve 15 does that for you, which is pretty darn sweet. So all you have to do is, you know, get the right settings that I'm about to show you right now, and you should be good to go. So what we're gonna do is go to custom. Doesn't matter, we're gonna go scroll down. Format is gonna be a quick time. The codec is gonna be uh, DNX. You can do DNX HR 12 bit, but I'm gonna do 10 bit. Just let's be honest, this is just a Panasonic GH5 Vlog file. It's only the maximum was 10 bit. So we're gonna just go with that. Uh, we're gonna go with 920 by 1080 HD for now, so we can keep this fast. Constant bit rate is fine. And then for the data levels, we want it full. Because video, that's Rec. 709, full, you want the whole range. We're gonna click on force highest and I just do those automatically. All right, this is very important. Then the audio, we're just gonna do main stereo, that's fine. And then we're gonna save this clip. I'm gonna save it to my tutorial file, HDR, and we're gonna call this ready for YouTube. Now, I'm gonna add this to render queue. The file that you're gonna get out of this render can be uploaded to YouTube directly. However, the file is freaking huge. So for the next part of this tutorial, I'm gonna make a video about how you can encode to H.265 and shrink and compress the file. You can upload this file right now and YouTube will read it as an HDR movie and it's, you're gonna be perfect. Let me know if you have any questions. Like I said, this is probably not the right way to do it, but it works for me, so I'm gonna stick with it. If you have any ideas or any suggestions about this, let me know. But yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.